Now, over this past weekend, I've seen a lot of fuckery, and of course, we're going to talk about it. We got the Idaho letter, the University of Idaho letter to the parents about the house that's unfortunately going to be demolished. We're going to discuss that, uh, plus talk a little bit about uh, the uh, DoorDash driver. We're going to have those discussions. My voice is starting to come back. It's still a little fucked up. Hopefully, you guys understand. I'm JB Gunner. This is Crime Time. Let's get right on into it. Let's go. What's going on, everybody? As you guys know, I'm JB Gunner, and this is Crime Time with JB Gunner, obviously. Uh, before we get started, I want to say first and foremost, thank you to everybody that supports the channel, regardless of the method you choose, whether it's Cash App, Patreon, Venmo, PayPal, uh, regardless of which channel you uh, support, whether it's this one, my news channel, my live stream channel. Truth is, guys, I couldn't do this each and every day as often as I do without you, the Gun Squad. So thank you so much. If you two find my content valuable, feel free to hit the links down below. Support the channel we actually lost one of my biggest sponsors over the last five years recently so you guys are what keeps this thing alive hopefully my voice will somehow get back to normal uh, it's been like this for about a week and a half i would say and i don't know where the fuck it's coming from i mean i pretty much still sound the same but I feel it. I don't know if it's allergies, what. Anyways, forget all that. Guys, while you're down there, if you want to, if you would, take a look at some of my other channels, my other content, my gaming channel, my uh, political channel, my live stream channel. It's not for everybody. I'll let you guys know this now. If you're a snowflake or easily offended, none of my content is for you, to be perfectly honest. I'm just going to be dead honest with you. So, uh, But if you do want to check some of it out, it is down below. All right, what we're going to be talking about here today, if my voice fucking holds up, is the house. Now, recently, um, everybody has learned that they're going to demolish the house. We're talking about the Idaho 4 murder case, the four college students that was mur brutally murdered inside this home, and um, oddly the owner of the house gifted it to the university. Then, oddly enough, the university says they're going to demolish it. To take it one step further, they're going to demolish it potentially before Brian Koberger's trial. Now, this could be, if you believe Brian Koberger is guilty, this could be dumb on one end. Because wouldn't you want the jury to be able to walk through the house like they have in other big cases like the OJ case? Uh, what, what was the, uh, the murder all trial? Like, wouldn't you want the jury to be able to go out here to this? Also, if you're the defense, is it possible that you would want the jury to go? I feel like this is a little premature, right? I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but uh, we're going to go ahead and jump right into this. Because the, the, the university has actually wrote a letter to the parents of the Idaho victims, in case you didn't know. Um, the University of Idaho sent a letter to the parents of the Idaho victims. The letter lays out protocol for what's about to come with the King Road home. Demolition will likely happen soon after re remediation efforts are finished. Now, I, I ain't going to lie to you. There's some things I don't know about. There's a lot of things that I do. I don't understand what the if they're going to demolish the house, like... I'm confused at what work they need to do. But also they've given the parents opportunities to come get some of the kids' stuff still. Like, there's still stuff in the house. I'm confused by all of this for the most part. But I do have a strong opinion on this. And we'll, uh, when it comes to the house demolition and this letter and things of this nature. But I do want to say something to you guys before we start this. Tomorrow, and maybe tomorrow, I may do a stream but there is a Twitter user by this beautiful woman right here by the name of Sleuthy. Shout out to Sleuthy Goosey. Uh, I do want to give her a shout out. But she actually has something that I've been looking over, and I think this is fucking awesome. It's the Idaho 4 timeline based on the Alpha David. Uh, now she's got me saying Alpha David. The Alpha David uh, right here, right? And this is a very detailed thing. I was looking at all this, and I do think I want to kind of go over this with you guys and give kind of a comprehensive look at the official timeline of everything that's occurred in this case. Because uh, let's be honest, there's a lot of theories, there's a lot of suggestions out here, and I think it's sometimes good to just put facts out here for you guys to see. And I think that this particular timeline is filled with facts, it kind of brings us up to date. There's a couple other things I want to talk to you guys about before we get into this, because let's be honest, Crime Circus and a lot of people are discussing this whole, is Brian Kohlberger the DoorDash driver? 
Now, I even shared it, and I said that it made me think. Before I, I want to make this clear to you guys. It's not even. I don't believe it's even possible. And let me explain to you why. The phone was turned off between three and five p.m. I mean, three and five a.m. If you're a DoorDash driver, like, wouldn't you need that to get your DoorDash orders? Now, I do want to say this before we get into the house. You guys know I don't necessarily think they have evidence of Brian Koberger. You guys know I don't necessarily think Brian Koberger is guilty. I'm not saying he's innocent. I have no clue. My gut feeling is that Brian Koberger did not commit these murders. Why is it that the DoorDash driver is not being actually looked at? I don't think Brian Koberger is the DoorDash driver. And I think that any suggestion that he is, is foolish. Because the simple look at the affidavit and the simple look at, at Brian Koberger's phone being turned off during those hours tells you right there he's not the DoorDash driver. Like, you need your phone, I would imagine, to do the DoorDash shit. Every time I order DoorDash, usually it gives me the, the, the delivery driver and their contact information. I don't know if it's like that in every state. I would imagine it's got to be pretty close to that, right? Here's the thing. However, I find it very odd that everybody believes the murders happened between 4 o'clock and 420. There was a DoorDash delivery at 4 o'clock. Why is the door keep in mind the door the DoorDash driver actually called and snitched on himself and said he delivered the fucking DoorDash at 4 a.m. Think about how many other people that commit crimes do that exact same thing. And so it's, it's, in my opinion, is it it's in case he was caught on camera. That's his way of saying I had a reason to be out there, which he did. The DoorDash delivery. How do we know that the DoorDash driver did not drop the order off, see Xana in there and think, well, she's kind of sexy or whatever, and then decide to go back in? I know what you're going to say. Well, he went upstairs and killed the other two first or whatever. We don't know any of that, to be perfectly honest. We don't know the order of any of this. We don't actually know. We have our theories. We know what news is reported. But I guess what I'm saying to you guys is, is this. W wouldn't it make kind of sense? Think about it. How odd is it for a DoorDash delivery to be at 4 o'clock in the morning? Let's just say you don't think it's that odd. What are the odds that at 4 o'clock in the morning, 4 a.m., two people go to the same house at the exact same time? I want you to think about this. I don't believe Brian Koberger was ever there. My theory now is that the DoorDash driver knocked on the door, saw that Zana was there, and saw that he was only delivering one human worth of food. Do you see what I'm saying? At 4 o'clock in the morning, if Zana was the only one ordering DoorDash, he may have thought she's the only one in there. Then he gets in there, and the Zana and Ethan thing happened, and he realizes, fuck, I got to kill these other motherfuckers. I don't know. But my point of this is, is why is the DoorDash driver immediately off the hook? I agree with Crime Circus on that. I disagree with him on the fact that he thinks Brian Koberger is the fucking DoorDash driver. The phone records show that he's not the DoorDash driver, in my opinion. But I have to admit... This entire time I've been saying that Brian Koberger is innocent, there has been one question that's been in my head. Then who the fuck did it? I don't understand why more people aren't looking at the DoorDash driver. He was there at the exact fucking time of the murders. The exact fucking time. I don't understand personally why the... Now, now granted... The police would know because when you have DoorDash, you can literally track it. So if his little car, you see what I'm saying, on the DoorDash thing, if the little car, if, if it showed that his vehicle moved away from that house, 
before 420, I'm talking about the DoorDash driver, if his phone records, if the DoorDash records show that he left away from that house prior to 4, 420 or whatever the fuck, then obviously that would be reason to consider him innocent. But just in my honest opinion, right here, right now, it makes the most sense that if the kids were murdered at 4 a.m., that the person that's on record going to the house at 4 a.m. is the guy. Maybe I'm right. Maybe I'm wrong. But I do not think Brian Koberger was the DoorDash driver. And I'm only stating that based on the phone. If his phone was turned off, it seems weird because I'm sure he would get his notifications for DoorDash through his phone. Maybe I'm wrong. I've never driven for DoorDash, so I have no fucking clue. But I would imagine that your phone has a lot to do with your DoorDash deliveries, right? All right. So I do want to say that I, I halfway agree with Crime Circus. 100%. Halfway agree. All right. So here's what we're going to do. Ashley Banfield, she's going to read this letter. I'll, I'll react to it. But I want you to see what, the, what these people, what the university is writing to the parents. Now, I want to make state my opinion on this very clearly, too. I, th I don't think this house should ever be torn down. I think, it's, I think that is more disrespectful to the, to the victims. Their final resting place. Their, I mean, their final moments on this earth. The place that they were murdered. That should stand as a, uh, in my opinion, I believe that tearing it down erases that memory. And I just don't think that, to me, I don't like the tearing down of history. I know some of you motherfuckers on the left do. You like to tear down statues. You like to do all that. But me personally, I, if it was my daughter, I would want it to still exist. I feel like the demolishing, the demolishing of it is erasing it. It's no longer there. To me, it should stand as a monument to the children. To the kids. That's just my personal opinion. But they've made this decision. Let's see what the letter they sent out to the families talks about. That was that exclusive letter that we have now obtained that the University of Idaho sent to the parents of all four of the victims of the Idaho student murders at 1122 King Road. And it has to do with the future of that home and what's going to happen and when it's going to happen. It's extremely sad um, because this is such a, I mean, this is just a, it's still a mysterious tomb, if you think about it. So many of the possessions of the kids are still in the home. And the university wanted to address that with the family as well. Um, not only the plan for the house of demolition and remediation, but also uh, reclaiming what's what's left. And there is reaction as well from the families, which I'm going to give you in a moment. I was I actually, I can't believe that, like, after all these months, well, let me make this clear. The school's already boarded it up. The scores put fence around it. It's clear that it's no longer a crime scene. I find that strange, right? Fine. I guess the, 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 I guess the police and everybody has gotten everything out of it that they want. But I, I, I'm really struggling with the fact this is not going to be available for a jury to walk through. Like, whether you're on Koberger's side or the victim's side, well, everybody should be on the victim's side. But... No matter what position you take, whether you're pro-prosecution or pro-defense in this case, that option should be available to both sides for the jury. I'm curious what you guys think about that, though. Let me know in the comments section. Let's just say, even if you're okay with this house being demolished, are you really okay with it being demolished before the fucking trial? Like, this feels like the whole house is a giant piece of evidence that may need to be presented at trial. I don't fucking get it. I don't understand. I don't understand. I'd like, just to me, this, this is premature as fuck. They're busting their nut early. This letter to you, word for word, without any editing. Okay, it begins this way. I am the acting general counsel for the University of Idaho. <laughs> they said without any editing, and then it immediately jumps to a... <laughs> to editing <laughs> but anyway and oversee the legal services for the university I first want to express my condolences to each of you for the tragic loss that you've suffered 
I greatly appreciate the positive manner in which you have interacted with the university in the aftermath of this tragedy. I am writing to communicate to each of you regarding the university's plans for the house at 1122 King Road. As was conveyed to you by Dean of Students, Blake Eccles, the homeowner gifted the house to the university with the intent by both parties that it be demolished. Before doing so, we will complete remediation within the house to address biohazards and chemical hazards that exist as a result of the crimes and ensuing investigation. Now that's the part I'm confused about, right? Like, what possible biohazard, I mean, the cleaning up of the, the plant? Like, I guess I'm just confused by this. Like, if you're demolishing it, what the fuck? Maybe I'm just ignorant when it comes to that type of shit. Like, what biohazardous material could, could actually be in there and why demolishing it wouldn't kind of... I guess I'm just ignorant on it. Like, to me, it seems weird to kind of damn near renovate the whole fucking thing and then demolish it. I understand it's not a renovation, but it's like, I, maybe, maybe you guys can tell me in the comment section, what am I missing here? And what hazardous material could it be? Just the cleaning supplies? I, I don't know. Maybe you guys, you guys help me with that. At the completion of the remediation, we intend to have the remediation team gather any items of personal property that do not appear to be contaminated and transfer them. Do you, uh, you know what? Look at that. I'm glad that the thing just happened. Look at that. Remember how I told you that that, remember I told you that, that doorway was small. Look at how small that woman is, right? Look at how even her, someone as small as her, she like, just, just look. Now imagine six foot tall, 200 pound Brian Kohlberger. Because if you remember right, Dylan said, you, uh, that she saw him walking through that like if you're Brian Koberger, you're walking towards that woman right there on the left is the room that Dylan would have been in now you guys know I've used the 360 and the house model and showed you that I don't I believe that that doorway was so fucking small I don't see personally how Dylan could have saw Brian Koberger, or whoever the fuck it was and Brian not see her Look at how small, and I said that, this is the first time I've actually seen it in a video. Look at how small that doorway is. And is it, isn't that a step up that she's about to step up on? It appear to be contaminated. It, it is. Now, if you look, look right beside her. That is the room that Dylan Mortensen was in. That room right there, that you, the door that you can clearly see. So if you are Brian Koberger, and remember, they had the neon uh, good vibes light right there. It would have illuminated all of that. So imagine you're Brian Koberger. You're walking through that. You're telling me after killing four people, you wouldn't have saw, and that, that person yelling out that door a couple times, you're telling me you wouldn't have saw her right there at that moment? I don't believe it because remember she was close enough or it was lit up enough to where she could, she was able to tell you about his bushy eyebrows. I do not believe that Brian Cobar, whoever the killer was and Dylan Mortensen did not see each other. I do not believe it one bit. And transfer them Look at how little to that doorway university is. personnel who will take these items to a secure off-site location for representative members of the families to review and recover. And just, just look at all the different lights. Look at all the different lights. And then, like I said, that neon um, good vibes light. I'm telling you, I don't believe it, it wasn't lit up in there. I do not believe they wouldn't have saw each other. Other items of your family members that you wish to keep. Look at, look at, look at, look at that. Look at how little. That is a chick and she almost takes up, then that's a small chick. And she takes up almost the entire doorway. And, and look. 
when she jumps off the thing. Clearly, it's a step. You wish Watch to her. Keep. Items uh, not. Clearly, there's a there's a little thing that you step down on there. <clears throat> I don't believe at all that Kohlberger and Dylan wouldn't have seen each other. Selected will then be properly disposed of. This will not apply to large, bulky items such as sofas, beds, or the like, to the extent that any remain on site. If Damn. you have specific items you wish to be on the lookout for, regardless of size, please let me know. If we can locate I don't see how those items are still you, there. We, will. we intend to proceed with demolition as soon after completion of the remediation as can be done. We do not. Are you telling me these families didn't already have a chance to come get their kids a shit? Is that what you're telling me? Is that these families have not had the opportunity already? And the, the crime scene's over. It's already transferred to an entirely new owner. Like, that's, that's baffling to me. Not yet have a specific date for when this will occur. We will notify you of the demolition date in advance so you are not caught by surprise by media reports. Bam. In the interim, we are making every effort to respect the dignity of your loved ones and our activities will be done outside of media scrutiny as much as possible. The house is currently surrounded by construction fencing. The windows and doors have been securely boarded and we are not allowing access into the house by anyone not specifically authorized by the university. Anyone yeah, that's crazy. Like anybody can now gain access to that, really. It's not up to the police anymore. It's up to this university. Like to me, that's, that's a crazy thought in the middle of the murder trial. Do you know, like I am I am I alone on this one? I, I I'm just not. I can't. I can't. I can't. Find authorized it. to enter the house will be required to agree to strict non-disclosure, and will be prohibited. From <laughs> they gotta. They gotta agree to strict non-disclosure. Do you think? You think people are gonna keep up? Keep that shit. Taking photographs or otherwise recording the inside. Ah oh, man, you know what we're gonna see. We're going to see some leaked photos and leaked footage of inside item. Come on, man. Some school is making them sign an NDA. Get the fuck out of here. That's not going to work. Somebody is going to leak that shit. Some, well, somebody. I can almost, it's, all, I can, it's almost a guarantee. This communication constitutes the university's formal notice to you of our intention to proceed with remediation and demolition as described above. If you have any concerns with these plans, please contact me by April 3rd of 2023. We will Damn, that's only a few days. Address those prior to proceeding. If you have retained legal counsel, I encourage you to share this communication, notifying you of the proposed plans. You or your counsel may contact the Office of General Counsel via email that's redacted, or call me at the phone number listed below, which I've redacted, to discuss any concerns or objections that you may have. Once again, I want to express my deepest sympathy and my condolences to each family member. It is my hope that the university's plan to remove the house helps you in your healing. I don't, I don't understand how that could even be possible. I think... <sighs> I think it's strange. I mean, get, I get it. We all have different opinions. I just don't think how tearing down. I don't know, man. I don't know. I know if it was my daughter and they got murdered in a house like that, I'd want to be able to drive by it once in a while. You know, I think that is more healing than it just being completely destroyed. Even though, because that was the last place that my child was alive in her last memories on this planet was right there and i think i would i would want it to stay away stay up a reply indicating you have received this email would be greatly appreciated and the letter is signed by the acting council at the university of idaho so that 
had to be processed by the family members. They have to either respond, at least to tell them that they've received the um, this email, um, and then also if they have any concerns about the plans for remediation and demolition, and then if they have any specific items that they would like to point the university to um, for retrieval. Thank you for watching. Go to. Well, my position on the house is clear. I don't think it should be demolished at all. I definitely don't think it should be demolished before trial. I think this is a big mistake. And I think, I'm sorry, I think Idaho's been dropping the ball this entire case. That's why everybody had so many different, so much different speculation in the beginning. Because you clearly can see where they're dropping the ball. I think this is dropping the ball. And you know what? Even if Brian Koberger did it, if Brian Koberger walks because they did not, or whoever murdered him, if they walk because these people are in such a fucking hurry to do shit like demolish the fucking murder scene, then they deserve it. Brian Koberger would deserve to walk or whoever. Because if, 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 if that legal system, if that police department is so goddamn stupid, that they're going to murder the location, they're going to demolish the murder scene before trial. You guys deserve what you get. I don't know if you guys agree with that. Anyway, love you guys. Let me know what you think. Even if, like, do you think this should be demolished before trial? There's, I mean, I can't fathom too many people agreeing that it should, right? It's possible, though. But also, what do you think about crime circuses? Um belief that Brian Koberger was the DoorDash driver. I think the fact that his phone was turned off during that period of time clearly proves that he wasn't. Crime Circus does great work, but I think that theory's way off. I do. So I'm curious what you guys think about that. Uh, shout out to Sleuthy Goosey, by the way, because uh, I am going to be using your spreadsheet a little bit later, or probably tomorrow, or in a stream or something. I love you guys. I'm JB Gunn. This is Crime Time. If you like what I do here and you find it valuable, you want to support the channel, the links are down below. I definitely appreciate all of you that do. Uh, couldn't do it without you. Let me know in the comment section what you think. I will see you guys tomorrow. I'm going to get up out of here. Be cool.